So today we are talking about acoustic ventilation. Now, acoustic ventilation is probably the most difficult part of soundproofing, especially when we're talking about applications such as music studios, uh, home cinemas, music venues, nightclubs, uh, these kind of venues where we're talking high volumes of sound, a wide range of frequencies, they tend to be the situations where we most need acoustic ventilation. Now, acoustic ventilation is sometimes used in domestic properties as well. So this is for everyone, uh, but we're going to probably more focus on the, the studios and the cinemas uh, kind of side of it today. Now, acoustic ventilation is uh, very, very difficult because it's basically the, the complete opposite of what we're generally trying to achieve. So when we're soundproofing, the idea is to create a barrier of airtight, sealed mass to stop air from passing in, in and out. Because if air can pass in and out, sound can pass in and out. And then when we come to install a vent, we cut a great big hole in the middle of that for air to pass in and out. Uh, seems uh, completely opposite to what we're trying to achieve. However, in a lot of situations, acoustic ventilation is needed. It's a necessary evil. We can't have a fully airtight room with people inside because they're eventually going to breathe, breathe up all their oxygen. Um, so you need to have that ventilation. So how do we deal with it? That's the, that's the difficult part. So what we're going to do in this video is talk you through a little bit about the science of what we need to do to actually uh, achieve acoustic ventilation. And we're going to talk through two products that we're supplying at the Soundproof in store at two different price points, a slightly cheaper acoustic vent, which is a little bit more basic, and then a more expensive vent that's uh, a little bit more engineered and, and does a, a better job but at a higher price point. So we're going to talk you through that, but let's get started with a bit of the science. Okay, so step one when it comes to uh, the science of trying to get the best sound reduction in your ventilation is, first of all, just to choose the best location. Um, in a lot of cases, especially with things like home studios, um, garden offices, home cinemas, you're going to have multiple surfaces that you can potentially install your ventilation, whether that's in the roof, whether it's uh, different external walls. So obviously, if you have two external walls that are pointing towards neighbors, and one external wall that's pointing towards an open field, put the ventilation on the side of the open field. So any sound that does leak out of there is leaking in a, a less priority area. Um, whereas if it's pointing towards the neighbors, you then need to reduce a lot more sound. So first of all, just take a good look at your space and choose uh, the area of least priority uh, in terms of the sound to locate your vent. Okay, so in terms of how we absorb sound with the actual vent itself, the problem is that we can't block the sound. So any other type of soundproofing, it's all about blocking the sound. We can't do that because if we block the sound from getting in and out, then we'll also block the air from getting in and out. And that means the vent won't work. So how do we stop the sound? Instead of blocking, we have to absorb. And the way that we absorb is by lining the vent or the, the ducting of the vent with material that is soft and porous and absorbent. Now, this is materials like acoustic mineral wool, uh, open cell foams. What happens is when sound hits it, it gets inside of the material and that material soaks the sound up like a sponge and it stops it from bouncing back in again. So if we can line the ventilation with that material, as the air passes through and it bounces off the surfaces of the vent, the sound is going to get absorbed by this material, which allows the air to pass through, but there's less sound in that air when it comes out the other end. So the longer the ducting is, or the more turns forcing the air to bounce off this soft material more times, the less sound will be left in the air at the end. So we're going to have a look at a couple of acoustic vent products that we supply. So this is our first option of acoustic vent. It's our more budget friendly option. Certainly an upgrade from just a standard non acoustic vent, but it is just a basic passive vent. There's no motors, there's no fans. It doesn't suck air in or blow air out. Air will just naturally pass through it. But where it's upgraded is, is what's going on on the, the inside. So just as any standard normal vent, we've basically got a, a grill uh, on one side, which would be inside of the property. 
a grill for the outside, which would be on the, the external wall, with a, just a nice grill to stop animals and birds from getting inside your, your ducting. But the important part is what's actually going on in this pipe. Now where a standard, a normal standard household kind of vent, this would just be a, an empty plastic tube. With it being an acoustic vent, the inside of this tube is lined with a big thick piece of open cell foam. So again, taking it back to the science, as the air passes through this pipe, it's gonna kind of move and it's gonna bounce and hit the sides. And as it hits the sides, it hits the, the open cell foam, which is gonna absorb sound out of the air. Now the downside is that the pipe isn't that long and it is straight. So although the air will hit the surfaces and some sound will certainly be absorbed out of it, it's not forcing the air to bounce more times. So it's, it's limited in how much sound is gonna be absorbed out of it. Now one other thing which I've, I've not mentioned with this kind of vent is you also have an optional reflecting screen at the end. Now you don't have to use this, but you certainly can. This would go on the, the external wall and it covers over here. And what it does is by covering the grill, when the air passes out, it hits this reflector, which forces the, the air to come out and then bounce down towards the floor instead of coming out straight towards the houses, which again does help for the sound, pushing it downwards instead of outwards. So this is our standard acoustic vent. Does a pretty good job, but we can certainly go further. And here we have option two. This is our higher performing acoustic vent. Now you can see straight away, it's certainly a lot bigger. And rather than just being a, a pipe with a, a grill on either end, it has this big baffle box, which is installed at the front. And this would usually go on the inside of the property. So this is on your, your studio side. Uh, just like with the other one, it does have a, a pipe for the air to pass down. It has an external grill. But the main thing is this box. So I'll just take the pipe off and show you what's going on in here. So this is what we call a, a baffle box. We'll go into baffle boxes in, in a little bit more detail later. But it's basically uh, something to force that air to travel a greater distance and force more bounces and turns of the air which allows us to then absorb more sound out of the air. And I'll show you what's going on inside. Because rather than it just being a, a hollow plastic box, what's happening here is the air will come into this small grill here, which is open and closable. So while you're you know, making noise and recording, you can close it if, if you wish. But the air and the sound will travel into here and into this box, which on the inside is lined with some very absorbent acoustic foam. If we take this part out as well, you can see that on the inside we have this almost kind of maze-like construction. And the idea behind that is as the air has passed in through the top to our, our little vent, it's being forced to have to, to make turns. So the air comes in and it's pushed in this direction or that direction. And again, as it does, it's bouncing off this soft absorbent material. Then it gets to the end and it has to turn again, and it has to turn again, and it has to turn again. And we're forcing multiple turns, multiple 90 degree turns. And with every time it's hitting more and more of this soft absor absorbent sponge. So that's why this one is a bit bigger, a bit more expensive, because there is a lot more going on. It's not a, just a straight ventilation pipe. It's, it's much more thought through, much more engineered. And it certainly reduces a lot more sound. Now, another thing, uh, going back to, to that word I, I mentioned before, baffle box, also sometimes known as a sound maze. They're very commonly used in, in studios and, and cinema applications. This is something that you can build yourself. It's a bit of a, a DIY. You basically build a, a big box, very similar to, to this, which is a kind of maze on the inside, lined with soft absorbent material, just like this. And it forces that air to turn more and bounce off more and more surfaces. Now, if you're using a, a more budget-friendly, uh, lower-performing acoustic vent, 
but you're using it in a very high volume application, you're probably going to have to combine that vent with a baffle box or a sound maze as well to really get, get a good performance. Whereas with this one, it's already got the baffle box built in. So depending on your volume, you may need to add a baffle box as well, but there's a good chance you, you won't need to. And just this vent alone is enough. So well worth the extra expense. So to sum up, acoustic ventilation is always going to be a weakness to a degree. At the end of the day, we're still letting air get in and out. It's never going to be 100% soundproof. But the idea is if we do it well, we can certainly minimize that problem and make sure that very little volume is coming out. So the main keys, just to recap, is first of all, location. Have a good look at your surroundings and choose the least priority surface to use for your ventilation. And in terms of when you're choosing your ventilation or installing it, we're thinking about how, how long is the air going to travel? How many times is it going to bounce off those soft surfaces? How many turns can we force the air to make so it hits those surfaces more? We've got to make sure those surfaces are soft and absorbent so the sound gets trapped and soaked up by the surfaces instead of reflecting back. Uh, the, these are, are really the keys. And the other thing to always bear in mind is if you need more, more soundproofing than what the vents uh, can offer, if you're really talking very high volumes, you've always got the option of installing a baffle box or a sound maze as well. And that's going to upgrade you even further. With this vent, it's more likely in a studio kind of situation that you will need one. With this one, it's, it's, you may be able to get away with just the vent alone as it performs so high. Uh, but these are all things to consider when looking into your acoustic ventilation.